Hi, my name is Aero Falcali. I'm an assistant professor of medicine and a hematologist at Mayo Clinic. I'm going to be talking today about myelodysplastic syndrome and chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. Myelodysplastic syndrome, or known as MDS, is considered by a lot of us as cancer of the bone marrow. Its M stands for myelo, which means blood cells or bone marrow. Dysplastic means that the cells look funny, strange, and syndrome means that this is actually not one disease, this is actually many diseases. MDS, which is myelodysplastic syndrome, is characterized by low blood counts. MDS is usually diagnosed by a bone marrow biopsy. We usually suspect this disease in a patient who is elderly, uh, have big cells, look funny, and this is chronic. So it's not one-time deal because there's a lot of other entities that can cause that, but more of something that has been going on for months and years. When we do the bone marrow biopsy, we look at the morphology of the cells. How do the cells look like? Are there any malignant cells? We usually term them as blast, how much of them there is in the bone marrow. And then after that, we do more testing, something called cytogenetics. This is a testing for the chromosomes to see are they abnormal or not. This doesn't mean that this disease is familial or congenital, but a lot of us can have chromosomal abnormalities as we grow and age. When patients are diagnosed with MDS, they always ask us, what kind of disease I have? So we have a classification for that as low or high risk disease. This is based on what kind of sub-entity of MDS you have. For example, RA is refractory anemia, which means you probably only have anemia, compared to RAEB, which means refractory anemia with excess blast. This is an entity, high risk, closer to le leukemia, and definitely a lot worse than the first disease I talked about. We look at your chromosome analysis, and then we look how many cell counts low you have. If you have many of them, that makes your disease worse. When we talk about treatment, it's important to know that it's not always this disease needs to be treated. I have a lady who's 84 year old who've been followed by my clinic once a year for the last six years. She's been doing okay. She does have mildly low counts, but she's asymptomatic. So there are indications for treatment, just like if you're requiring blood transfusions, or if you have an advanced disease, i.e. you have increased blast in your bone marrow or sometimes in your peripheral blood. For those patients, they need to be treated. If you are less than age of 70 and you are in good performance status, then transplant from somebody else, like a brother or sister or somebody else, could be an option. However, this is not a common option to do. In the other patients, we sometimes use growth factors called erythropoietin. This is, these are hormones try to stimulate your red cells. The problem, it only works in a third of the patients, and if it works, it doesn't last more than one or two years. There is a pill called lenalidomide. This pill can work in subtype of patients with MDS called to have chromosome number five missing or deleted. That case, if you take lenalidomide, it can work in about two-thirds of the patients and making them transfusion independent, not requiring blood transfusions anymore. The majority of the patients, if they need therapy, they get what's called hypomethylene agents, is acetidine or desitabine. These are two shots given every day for five to seven days every month. The problem is with these therapies, even though they do exist and they do work, the chance of you achieving complete remission is low. Therefore, many patients come to Mayo Clinic to get new therapy, novel treatments. At Mayo Clinic, we have, developed, we have clinical trials that we check novel agents or combination agents, which, has, which have proved to be very effective in patients with high-risk disease. On the other side, there is a disease called CMML, chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. This disease is a rare blood disease and used to be classified under MDS. However, we did notice that some patients with CMML 
present in a different way than MDS. They present with high temperature, fevers, weight loss, big spleen, or what we call a splenomegaly. The treatment of, M of CMML is usually derived from the MDS treatments, and everything I've talked about does stand true for CMML. So I advise you, if you were diagnosed with MDS or CMML, to get an expert opinion about your disease. And if you need treatment, to look for a clinical trial where I think we are developing very promising drugs for the future.